In my research on the writings of Dorothy L. Sayers, there are times when her words feel very appropriate to our own cultural moment, though they were written 70 or 80 or more years ago. Her essay, The Dogma is the Drama, is a case in point in our current times of dividing into camps and disagreeing without really listening. Christians may decry their portrayal in media and the arts, but they do little to correct it or, better yet, offer a more winsome picture of Christ and his teachings. Certainly many people have little idea what Christianity even claims to be. Sayers writes of her own day, It would not perhaps be altogether surprising if, in this nominally Christian country, where the creeds are daily recited, there were a number of people who knew all about Christian doctrine and disliked it. It is more startling to discover how many people there are who heartily dislike and despise Christianity without having the faintest notion what it is. If you tell them, they cannot believe you. I do not mean that they cannot believe the doctrine. That would be understandable enough since it takes some believing. I mean that they simply cannot believe that anything so interesting, so exciting, and so dramatic can be the orthodox creed of the Church. Sayers had written a play called The Zeal of Thy House in 1937, and some of the actors and theater people had found her theological theme about Christ's incarnation and its implication for human creativity, sin, and forgiveness to be astonishing. She tried to convince them that this was not her own original idea, that her play was dramatic not in spite of the dogma, but because of it. As she says, in short, the dogma is the drama. But how can we get this message across when Christians themselves seem so bored with it? She writes, Somehow or other, and with the best intentions, we have shown the world the typical Christian in the likeness of a crashing and rather ill-natured bore. And this in the name of one who assuredly never bored a soul in those 33 years during which he passed through this world like a flame. We Christians too often settle for an imitation or a fad or a program. If we wish to show Christ to the world, we must be truly startled by this God-man, Christ himself and wrestle and live with the implications of his hardest words about enemies, lost sons, taking up our cross, dying and rising with him. We ourselves must be stirred by the drama of this dogma, if it is going to mean anything to others. Let us, in heaven's name, drag out the divine drama from under the dreadful accumulation of slipshod thinking and trashy sentiment heaped upon it and set it on an open stage to startle the world into some sort of vigorous action. If the pious are the first to be shocked, so much the worse for the pious. Others will enter the kingdom of heaven before them. If all men are offended because of Christ, let them be offended. But where is the sense of their being offended at something that is not Christ and is nothing like him? We do him singularly little honor by watering down his personality till it could not offend a fly. Surely it is not the business of the church to adapt Christ to men, but to adapt men to Christ. Our Christianity should be startling. Our claim about Christ is rather shocking. He is God himself. If the world is to see Christianity as more than just old-fashioned and traditional, Christians must delight in and wrestle with Christ's exclusive claims. As a playwright, Dorothy L. Sayers did this particularly well in her Life of Christ radio play series, The Man Born to be King. And the pious were shocked and stretched in their understanding of Christ, and many secular people gave Christ a second look. These days, that may mean doing the hard work of patiently articulating a robust Christian line of reasoning. More often, it means the daily, lived-out trust in this God-man Christ, so that others may truly see who he is through us. It is the dogma that is the drama, 
Not beautiful phrases, not comforting sentiments, nor vague aspirations to loving kindness and uplift, nor the promise of something nice after death, but the terrifying assertion that the same God who made the world lived in the world and passed through the grave and gate of death. Show that to the heathen, and they may not believe it, but at least they may realize that here is something that a man might be glad to believe. So, let's take a deep breath. Our faith is not in rules or a philosophy, but in a person. Jesus Christ, who is the eternal Son of God, but inserted himself into human history as a human being. We, his own creatures, killed him. But he rose again from the dead and opened the way for us to be reconciled to God and live in loving relationship with him. This is our story. And as Sayers says, if people actually knew it, they might hesitate because it takes some believing. But let us be so enthralled by it that even if they cannot believe it, they might, as Sayers says, see that here is something a person may be glad to believe. Thank you.